Hi, this is BK from ManForWars.com, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide, offline, locally teach kids to be and teach them to look, talk, and feel great. And uh, to help the same polite patriots locally discuss and share great online info they find offline with their neighbors. Uh, give them a chance to defend their countries. Give them a chance to hear different and think for themselves. If it's the only way to. And if it's uh, stupid, they can laugh at or correct it. If it's smart, they can uh, enjoy and pass it on. And you'll make better people and better places to live. And um, and uh, then we'll stop our, our kids who are being turned into little commie zombies and corporate clones just like the rest of us. Um, we'll stop them um, because if they won't listen to adults they don't respect. We'll stop them from killing us all because uh, us adults had nice stuff and Greta said that made bad weather and that bad weather destroyed the earth. And there is some of that um, that teaching going on out there. See the great work of uh, Millie Weaver or Millennial Millie uh, of the Infowars uh, sort of family um, of, uh, of, of journalists. Um, and, and she's exposing the Sunrise Project, for, for example, where a bunch of kids are being taught that right now. So it's important for adults to respect each other. And even though we're supposed to be gender neutral and gender equal and fashionably a mess with each other, can't really want attention. We, we want attention from being a mess instead of respect for making sure nobody is. Um, you know, I, I do know that it's actually much more popular in the real world, offline, outside the matrix, um, than, than many are comfortable talking about because we're supposed to be gender equal, gender neutral, corporate clones or commie zombies, easy to control. So we can beat that. So support the manforwars.com efforts, this channel and so on. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And you'll appreciate that too. Because then instead of saying, whatever, buddy, people can do whatever they want. I'm like, not exactly. What if they forget how and they're never able to again, right? That's my issue. So, um, and on that, um, we have internet impotence. What is, uh, what is it and how to beat it? Internet impotence. What is it and how to beat it? Um, well, you know, um, let's, let's look at it, right? I mean, if you, if you just judge it on its surface, right? If I say internet impotence, what does that mean to you, right? It could mean basically that, well, you're on the internet and so you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at stuff, but, but are you doing stuff? Are you doing stuff with it or is it just doing stuff to you? You know, uh, the great uh, Axl Rose, lead singer of uh, Guns N' Roses, had a classic line where he says, vicarious existence is a fucking waste of time, right? And uh, he basically says vicarious existence, living through other people, living through sports heroes, living through, you know, people you fantasize about, living through celebrities, right? He's, he's basically commenting on that in a general sense. And when it comes to the internet, you know, a lot of us are doing that, right? Um, you know, there are people out there that say, people need to wake up, or people are such sheeple, we're all doomed, you know. Um, I've got my, you know, guns, and when they come for me with, you know, 50 drones, I, I'll, I'll beat the first 20 with my guns, but then I'll run out of bullets and they'll kill me, or robots, or whatever, right? So it's not really practical, right? But that's the type of uh, internet impotence that's being engendered out there, right? Where um, we're on the internet, and, um, you know, I'll see comments left on my channel or whatever other places. I've made videos commenting on this where I say, you can't just call people sheep. You can't just say Canada clown world, for example, or clowned out or put a guy with a paper bag over his head or Canadians are such cucks, such sheep, whatever. If that's your way of fighting back, that's a pretty damn sheepish thing to do, right? And there are people out there doing much more than that. And we can all do much more than that. But that's, generally speaking, internet impotence, where the internet is making us impotent, where we'll digest hours of content, where when people don't respect each other that much, uh, as, as is the current fashion, where guys are a mess, and then girls can't be anything but a mess with guys who are a mess, and then kids can't be anything but a mess, right? Because, you know, it's not, it's not people don't, don't, don't respect each other, or people worry about what you, what you do because you can't say anything, right? Social constipation, gender neutralization, and then they'll watch hours and hours of other people talking. They'll watch vlogs like this or listen to podcasts and so on. So this is sort of where we're being herded into the matrix, into living online, right? And this is part of internet impotence, and I'll get more into that uh, in just a little bit. Um, but basically, you know, among the points I have here is, number one, is the internet making it easier or harder to beat the bad guys, right? Is the internet making it easier or harder to beat the bad guys? Now, that's an interesting question, right? I mean, your first thought is, of course, it's easier. Look, we have all this information. We know what they're up to, right? We know about, um, you know, the central banksters who print money from nothing, right? Um, you know, and, and, and so we know, right, that, that, you know, central banksters print money from nothing to control the world. But 
we're also caught as social creatures trying to keep up with the Joneses and keep up with each other and get you know likes and thumbs and 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 and, and be part of the the, the 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 collective conversation in our internet circles so even though we know about the central banksters they get us caught up in identity politics where it's ah what is this ah you know uh, don't say happy holidays say merry christmas ah oh, those damn liberals all oh, those damn conservatives you know um oh gay stuff or lesbian stuff or black lives matter stuff or antifa stuff or don't tear down these statues or so and so what are they doing today oh my god these people are crazy right so even though we know that there are people above this mess that are kind of trapping us with classic divide and conquer strategies just updated with you know 21st century best in class top of the line best in history brainwashing you know we often don't muscle past the daily kind of mess that we're trapped in to sort of go hold on slow down calm down this is a lot of this is nonsense i mean you know you can you can have some comment on it we shouldn't let our culture be totally warped and destroyed to the point where we're not happy or they just take the most messed up people and put them in charge so we're all a mess and i'm a mess about this and you have to you have to respect that well i don't actually respect it nobody respects it but do i have to accept it yes you have to accept it i'm a mess and you better be a mess too otherwise you're not doing the right thing because that's the right thing to do right that they're, they're getting us trapped in that world right so instead of going hold on slow down calm down right we, we don't all know everything we might I'll be at most 80% right, right, you know, but the other 20% live and learn, right, and and empathize. We're all trapped in the same system, right? So in terms of is the internet making it easier or harder? Easier in some ways, but harder in others because, um, you know, back in the day, if you heard, you know, oh my God, they're normalizing pedophilia, you'd get together with your neighbors, you'd get a bunch of pitchforks and axes and, and, and torches, and you'd go to march over to the school board and you'd say, knock it off or we'll kill you. And they'd probably knock it off. Now, we often get used to it on the internet. So that's an issue, right? And, and many other parallel sort of topics as well, right? Um, so easier with all the knowledge in the world, um, and handy to learn and share, harder with it crushing people who don't do enough with it to make a difference, right? And that's a key, right? I was talking to a, a lovely young patriot lady uh, the other day. And, uh, um, and she um, was saying, you know, she hates it, she knows they lie, but she watches the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, or the Communist Canada Broadcasting Corporation, the state-funded broadcaster that's a PR agency for the Canadian federal government, similar to the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation in, in England, right? Um, she's like, I force myself to listen to the CBC radio or watch some CBC TV, even though it drives me crazy, right? And I told her, I said, well, listen, that's partly how it's driving you crazy, right? You know, if if you take in this information about how things are getting all messed up and you don't do something with it, you don't comfortably express it in dialectic conversations with people you respect offline, where you get it out, you feel your balls, you know, you have, especially as men, women too, everybody, but especially as men, you don't have a big old bullshit gasm by getting it out there. And this is how I feel. God damn it. And I'm taking a ballsy stand and a ballsy way of talking about it or an eggsy way of talking about it. If you're a chick or whatever, if you don't have that, then it can crush you where you're like, ah, more stuff, ah, more lies, ah, more brainwashing, ah, more elevation of BS that's screwing up everybody where we live, ah, 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 right? And so she comments, she says, yeah, sometimes she, she tweets stuff, she reposts stuff or whatever. So there are ways you can get it out there, but things like this vlog and things like, you know, taking a real, you know, uh, organized and active approach are the ways you can deal with this more effectively and feel your balls, feel your eggs, feel better about it, as opposed to it assaulting you in waves, you digesting it, you feel like you're responsible in the sense of you have to keep on top of it, but it makes you more and more impotent, right? It's internet impotence, right? It's like if you're slapped in the face, right? And you just sit, you just don't do anything, right? You don't go, hey, what the hell was that? Or what's going on? Or you don't square up and get ready for a fight, right? And you're just slapped in the face, right? And you don't go, what, you, you, don't, you don't react to it, right? Then you're impotent, right? If, if someone's a bitch and they bother you, they mess with you, they, they lie, they make you uncomfortable, they drain your energy, and you don't, you don't uh, react to it. You don't either cut them, 
you know, if you get something to cut them with, you don't want to cut them. Paperwork these days is a bitch, so don't cut them. If you don't cut them off or have some sort of response, right, um, then then you're you're impotent in the face of it, right? So when it comes to this this avalanche of information on the internet, especially in the age of social media, where on Facebook, on Twitter, on Gab, Parler, Telegram, uh, on Instagram, um, you know, on whatever, Gram, whatever, 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 right? It's just an avalanche of stuff, right? Sometimes good stuff, shortening our attention span, shorter and shorter TikTok videos, sillier and sillier things that you need to distract you as you get weaker and weaker and you're less able to handle more rich and nourishing things when it comes to a culture, when it comes to fun or serious stuff, more complicated stuff. It's gotta be simpler and sillier and stupider and more sort of non sequitur, right? Um, you know, so it has an effect on blue pill people, but it also has an effect on red pill people, right? It does have an effect on red pill people say, oh my goodness, they're doing this to us now. Oh my goodness, they signed this legislation. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. That is internet impotence. That is engendering us being impotent in the face of this, right? And if you're the bad guys, right? You might think, oh, look what I found. I saw this YouTube video or YouTube bandit. I saw this bit shoot video where the bad guys have these secret plans to screw all of us. And I saw it and they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know. We saw this, we got the documents. I saw them on Infowars.com. I saw Alex Jones on the Alex Jones show. We got the documents, right? And, and so on, right? Well, let me ask you a question, right? The, um, the bad guys, right? They obviously want to keep some things secret, no doubt, but why? Why would they want to keep anything secret from us? Because they're afraid of what we would do, right? However, what if they told us what they were doing? Even stuff that's pretty secretive. What if they told us what they were doing? Stuff that we hated, we didn't like, we think they're liars or jerks or criminals or even worse, satanic pedophiles, right? Who are doing awful things to kids as I speak, as you speak every day, right? And what if we did nothing, right? So that's part of internet impotence. That's why the internet in some ways I believe was created. The internet, the international net, global surveillance grid, global data mining grid on all of us, all of our habits and so on. And also to create this internet impotence, right? They clearly, know what we're up to, right? In terms of they, whoever the they are, right? The, the people that, you know, run the giant uh, big tech or big tech stopo companies clearly know what we're up to or the intelligence agencies behind them or people like the National Security Agency in, in the United States that has giant uh, uh, data collection, um, you know, hubs and they, their job is basically to spy on all of us and look for terrorist communication or pedophile communication or stuff like that, right? And so, um, you know, they clearly know kind of what we're up to, right? And I believe part of their plan is to create this internet impotence, right? Um, so for example, in the last you know couple of years, it's kind of faded a bit more recently, although it's still out there, but maybe say uh, a year or two years ago, there was a whole bunch of hubbub about pedophilia, right? There was the Pizzagate scandal where there was a, a pizza parlor in Washington, D.C., where the owner, James Alifantis, is one of the 50 most powerful people in Washington, according to I think it was Vanity Fair magazine or something. And it's like, how does this pizza shop owner, you know, one of the most powerful people in Washington, right? And then if you check his Instagram account, there's a bunch of creepy pictures of kids to, you know, just in creepy stuff with their hands taped to their table and, you know, facing forward, like something's happening behind them that shouldn't be, right? Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff and a whole bunch of allusions to pedophilia, right? And they've had performances there and it's kind of a dirty pizza place, right? And then you've got the Hillary Clinton emails released by WikiLeaks, where it was stuff in a bunch of code, right? You can't say exactly what they're talking about, but you do know they're speaking in code because nobody speaks like that, right? You know when people are talking in code and sort of pigeon English, right? Talking about <clears throat> pizza and ordering tens of thousands of dollars worth of hot dogs for a party and, uh, you know, talking about, you know, having kids available for a pool, right? And stuff like that. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you cross-reference that with, uh, with the FBI, uh, where they talk about how when they're tracking pedophiles, this is what pedophiles do. This is how they speak in code. Pizza is slang for, you know, little girls and hot dogs slang for little boys and stuff like that. And 
the pizza symbol, the sort of triangle um, with sort of squiggles in it is sort of a, a code that they use, right, in, in, in these circles, right? And as the FBI catches pedophiles, you know, and, and other sort of groups do, they learn all their coded language, right? So a lot of this coded language was in the Hillary Clinton emails, and then there's connections to this pizza place in Washington, D.C., and then there's Wise's owner, one of the 50 most powerful people in D.C., and on and on and on, right? And then there's a whole bunch of channels out there that were going crazy, and there was, um, I, 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 look, I was into it too. I was, it was the thing to do, right, to, to, to fight the damn pedos. I mean, kids are, are being threatened by these damn pedos, and people are making a stink about it. I'll retweet, I'll repost, I'll watch a video, I'll make a video, I'll, I'll make a meme, you know, patriots versus pedophiles, parents versus pedophiles. I'll look at the way they're sexualizing kids with the books where they put all these books in schools, you know, learning your body, and it's, 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 it's pornographic stuff where they get cartoon images of kids looking at their genitalia, kids sitting on a bed in little like childlike, you know, kids book drawings, you know, uh, jerking off and stuff. And it's okay to jerk off and it's okay to do this and that. And boys have a this and girls have a that. And that's how they work together and really up close graphic stuff. And they're putting this stuff in schools, right? Then you add in the uh, LGBTQ uh, pedo sex ed where these adults are like, well, we have to teach kids about sex or we'll feel bad. Or what if one of them is one of these things, or what, you know, a different sex besides straight. And, and, and you know, and we, we have to get to them early to, to make sure that they, they're comfortable. It's like, no, 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 you do not. You don't have to get to any kids early about sex, period. You adults, if you need kids to learn how you have sex uh, or you'll feel bad, then screw you. And if you think kids need to learn all sorts of different types of sexes and genders and be all confused and so on and, 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 and you think that's what they need, uh, you know, because otherwise they'll be miserable. No, right? They'll, once they start hitting puberty and they get older and they're, they're a bit more settled, you know, their brains are developing, their bodies are developing. The human brain doesn't really finish maturing until around 25, right? But as they're hitting puberty and they start getting, you know, more manly and they get more into that or they get more girly and more into that, then they can figure out if they want to be straight or gay or lesbian, right? And that's definitely a later teen thing at the absolute earliest, right? Instead of this trans kid stuff and all this other crap where they take hormones to retard their brain and body development, blah, 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 right? And it's bad for your health, permanently sterilizes you. And, and these kids, you know, yesterday your little boy wanted to be a dinosaur. The day before he wanted to be an astronaut. The day before he wanted to be a Tonka truck. One day he says he wants to be a girl and that's it. You gotta take your five-year-old in to, to get hormone treatments. It's complete insanity being pushed, right? Um, or vice versa with the girls, right? And with adults being crappier, being ladies and gentlemen, you don't wanna grow up to be your dad when he's sideways, not confident, just a mess, doesn't show or get respect. You don't wanna grow up to be your mom when she's like a, a shrill, bitchy mess with guys that are a mess, right? Why, right? So that's why they're like, well, th these aren't good role models. So little boys like, maybe maybe, I, maybe I don't wanna be that. Maybe I, I wanna be a girl, right? Maybe I'll try that. Or little girls, you know, are like, well, I don't want to be that. Maybe I'll cut off my boobies, right? And and you got pubescent girls going in for breast removal or reduction surgery, all of this crap, right? Um, and 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 plus the attention they get, right? Kids want attention. When you're a little boy, it's like, oh, sit there, little boy. You're you're too rowdy, right? A little girl, oh, little girl, oh my goodness, you got to be more like a boy. You can't be all feminine and stuff and enjoy what girls enjoy. You know, so, you know, that's, that's, that's so stereotypical. It's like, okay, great. I can't be happy being a boy, you know, because I'm too energy, too whatever. Can't be happy being a girl because girls, girls are weak. No, you should be more like a man, do whatever a boy can. So they're not happy, right? And then, yet if they switch, if all of a sudden they come out as, oh, I'm trans, I'm a boy, but I want to be a girl. Oh my goodness, you want to be a girl. We have to take care of you, pay attention to you, celebrate you. Don't worry. Everyone treat him well. It's okay if this boy wants to be a girl. Everyone in class, make sure they're comfortable. It's like, what? You know, what kid, social kids, don't want to be comfortable, right? So it's a way of encouraging them to be comfortable. That plus the drag queen story hour, you know, getting the, these grown ass men, some of them with their junk, not even taking being a chick seriously. Some of them pedophiles exposed by groups like massresistance.org who go to libraries, go to schools and say, it's okay if we're drag queens, it's okay. Bring your kids over, put them on our laps. Yeah, let's bounce them on, your, on, on our lap. Nobody should be doing that. You know, at the most, it should be Santa Claus at a mall with the parents there for less than 30 seconds because there's a long line and any more than that's creepy right? Um, you get on Santa's lap, 
Santa's there, a whole bunch of adults, a whole bunch of parents around. Santa barely touches the kid. He just kind of stabilizes him at most. Oh, 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 young man, what do you want? I want a bicycle for Christmas. Fair enough. We'll, you know, see, check if you've been good. And if you have been, you'll probably get that. Winks to the parents. Shoo. Next one, right? That's it. Not drag queen story hour, a bunch of guys in drag with a bunch of kids or laying on the ground, kids crawling all over them, right? So the reason I bring all this up is to say there was a huge hubbub about this a while ago. The work of Craig Sawyer, vets4childrescue.org. Vets, the number four, childrescue.org. Great guy, kind of like a real life Chuck Norris, right? Um, former Navy SEAL, badass dude. Um, and, and, and he's made a new film called Contraland. Look up Contraland, contralandmovie.com, or just look up Contraland and movie and support his work and, and the great documentary he made where he and his team of ex law enforcement, military, uh, police, you know, some Hollywood people got together. They, they, they worked with uh, current law enforcement to, uh, to, to find some pedophiles, either uh, piggybacking off their investigations or starting their own and then turning them over to law enforcement and then coming through with a film crew and filming it because it's dangerous to deal with pedophiles. But if you're ex-military or ex-law enforcement, you're like, hey, if they start shooting, ain't someplace I ain't, ain't been before, right? So, um, so support Craig Sawyer's great work. But I'll tell you, that in the last few years, right, I've seen this groundswell of support to expose the pedophiles. And then I've seen it kind of taper off in the last, say, you know, few months or year or so, right? So that is internet impotence, right? They generate all this hype on the internet. They generate all this hype with people talking to strangers about it. And yet you're generally not talking to your neighbors about it and then working with your neighbors um, by either informing and empowering them uh, when it comes to what's going on and then affecting some policy or legislative change where you live. Not saying it never happens. I'm just saying it rarely happens, right? The Muslims are a little bit more hardcore about this than, than most other people, right? But the idea is just knowing what's going on is not good enough to get stuff done about it. In fact, knowing what's going on and even getting upset and outraged at it on the internet or tweeting furiously about it or having leaving comments on videos, you know, expressing, you know, how you feel about it, how this sucks, how whatever, that is internet impotence, right? So that's what it is. And I'll get to how to beat it um, in just a sec. But I just want to make the point that the worst thing in the world, the thing that people hate the most and care about most when it comes to pedophilia, um, you know, is, um, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is being normalized as well, right? Um, so they obviously know what we're up to and, and they, uh, you know, might, might let us know to normalize their actions, right? Um, the next thing I'll talk about is um, internet impotence when it comes to, um, you know, community, right? As I say here, people isolated want communities. So they're more likely to go along to get along with isolating mainstream propaganda, get weak with others, feel, and, and, and feel isolated. The vicious circle is the more you fight and resist, the more isolated you get, right? So um, this is part of internet impotence, right? So um, basically, we, we are being isolated. We're being divided and conquered. We're being turned to narcissists, you know, uh, we're supposed to be a mess, a narcissistic, selfish uh, uh, mess. We're supposed to be obsessed with our problems. Now, men, you need to share your feelings more. You're supposed to be a mess. Come on, come on, break it. Well, I guess my dad didn't love me that much. I guess my mom wasn't this. I guess things could have been better. I guess, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought I was fine, but 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 no, I, I'm supposed to be a mess, right? And women are like, oh, women this, oh my God, men today, and I'm a woman, what could I do? And I'm strong, I can do anything, but I'm weak, I'm a victim, you know, uh, me too, whatever, right? And just all this confusing garbage, right? So we're being turned into isolated narcissistic messes, right? Um, and, um, and yet we want community, right? So as part of the internet impotence, we're more likely to go along with the sort of mainstream propaganda or even red pill propaganda to kind of feel like we're part of something, right? As we get more isolated, we want to feel like we're more part of something, right? But the more we go along with mainstream propaganda or even some red pill propaganda, the more isolated we get because that's what that propaganda is designed to do, right? So for example, with the mainstream propaganda, you're supposed to be you know, um, obsessed with celebrity or identity politics or victimhood or these days you're supposed to be Black Lives Matter, you know, Antifa, whatever. You're supposed to be like, we're victims, 400 years, we're a mess, we're screwed, we're this, we're that, we have not overcome, we have a long way to go. It's like, are you okay, man? 
Like, seriously, calm down for a sec. Are you not, like, cool? Like, you know, you can generally get along with people if you respect each other, and you're generally not denied most opportunities at this point in history, and if you want to, you can get a job, or you can go to school, or you can become president, or whatever. Like, seriously, I, all that stuff may have happened, but are you okay? Because if you really think about it, you're probably okay. No, I'm not okay. I'm a mess. You don't understand how, how, how hard we have it, how much of a victim I am. It's like, okay, great. Right? So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go along with that? Great. So that's weakening and isolating, right? And white people, you know, hey, white people, you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. You know, you, you all right? No, I'm a mess. I'm this and that and so on in my feelings and whatever. And, and black people have had it so hard and they're such a mess and they're such a victim and, uh, and I've got to feel so guilty and I've got to feel bad. I don't know what it's like. I don't know how bad, you know, they had it. It's like, dude, if you're a grown ass man, you know, you've had black friends and experiences with other black people before and they didn't, this wasn't a thing. We didn't care for the most part. I'm not saying there's no racism out there. There's some and there's some racist cops and there's some people that do bad things, but we just thought they were idiots. We didn't think they were like, oh my God, this is a huge thing we've got to cry about. It's like, no, 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 they're just idiots. If it's not too excessive, they're just idiots. And you try and make them not idiots or you just isolate them. You socially ostracize those idiots so they are act less idiot idiotic, right? So if, you, if you're old enough to know, then you know it's not that bad. But if black people have to play victims and that's gotta be, you know, where they're, especially online, social media, the more of a mess you are, you know, the more the more sort of cred you get because you you feel more for the cause, you feel more for people, you feel more of people's pain, so that makes you a better person. And if you're white people, you know, same with your version of it, where you know, black people are like, We're we're a total mess because of all the systemic racism. And white people are like, We're a total mess because of our privilege. We don't understand what a mess black people are, and so we've got to cuck and we've got to kneel and we've got to bow and scrape. So who are we all messes and victims? Uh, you know, for, like who, who, in service of whom? Who's the people that control us? You know, the rich, evil, central banksters at the top print money from nothing, blah, 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 like I said earlier. And then, you know, people below them, the giant corporations and so on, um, and, and all the other people in the, the power structure that are managing us and controlling us, right? We are all victims of each other and, and getting into being victims and then victims um, you know, uh, uh, of them, right? Um, except with the divide and conquer stuff, we don't see them. So that's internet impotence as well. Because as part of this, right, where you're supposed to kind of go along with the mainstream propaganda to be a victim um, of that, or go along with the red pill propaganda, where you're a victim of the fact that you're awake, but you're impotent, you're not doing enough to wake people up, and we're just online, uh, uh, listening to or talking to like minds and um, and complaining that people need to wake up. It's like wake up and do what? Wake up and complain that people need to wake up. Like what's 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 that? That's internet impotence, right? So um, you know that's that that's part of the game. So when it comes to, to to being isolated and then going along with communities of people, we are directed as part of the international net, as part of the internet. We are directed to spend more time talking to strangers online than we do talking to each other offline. And in fact, we can turn to two different species, online and offline, right? Online, we'd be like, free speech, free speech, say what you want, do what you want, we shouldn't have censorship. And then offline, no, nope, sheepish, quiet, sketchy, commie zombie, corporate clone, fashionably uncomfortable near you, fashionably uncomfortable near me, can't really look at you, too uncomfortable, can't really look at me, you know, maybe bother strangers, try and make another zombie, right? Like that's that's basically what happens to people, right? So this is all part of internet impotence as part of this divide and conquer scheme, right? Um, um, so, um, you know, um, you know, um, what is internet impotence? There, there give you some examples, right? And, um, you know, how, how do we beat it, right? Well, you know, a couple of things, right? Um, first of all, um, there is online is fine, right? It's great. I like the internet myself. Um, but we often get stuck talking to like minds. We're censored into digital ghettos. YouTube censors go to bit shoot, right? Um, you know, uh, Twitter censors go to gab, right? So we're not reaching out to new people. And then it gets harder and harder to talk to each other because 
you know, they, you know, have a mainstream understanding that they're desperately trying to cling to as part of their feeling of community. You have a red pill understanding that you're trying to cling to as part of your internet community. And then you get offline and you can't really say that much to each other, right? If you're mainstream, you don't know much red pill stuff, but you know, when people are all supposed to, you know, um, uh, hear, think, talk, and act the same, why even bother talking when it's all the same crap anyway, right? Um, and, 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 and that's in the mainstream, uh, in, in the blue pillville. And if you're in red pillville, you're not supposed to talk about that and make uncomfortable people any more uncomfortable. You're just supposed to be uncomfortable with those uncomfortable people. Oh, you're a mess. All right. What can I say to a mess? I can't burden a mess with any more, you know, uh, stress. So I'll also be a mess. So we're two different species online and offline, right? Where, where you see that happening. We're online keyboard warriors, offline, fashionable, quiet, you know, lying, bitchy, sketchy, you know, uh, 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 cuck, right? You know, whatever, right? Guys, hey, I'm a mess. You know what it is. And girls are like, well, I'm a mess with a mess. Kids are like, I don't respect these messes, you know? Um, you know, that's what's happening to us, right? Um, so um, so winning the offline info war, locally winning the offline info war is important, right? Um, you know, I'll tell you, we did a few years ago, briefly, somebody set up a meetup group. So us red pill folks who were learning what was going on could talk about it with other people, right? We were just watching videos and oh my God, bankers print money from nothing to run the world. I can't talk to many people about this, right? You know, 9-11, oh my God, I can't talk to many people about this and, and so on and so forth, right? So somebody set up a meetup and we met together every Saturday for two, three hours and we enjoyed falafels and shawarmas at a little falafel and shawarma place. And it was about 15, 20 of us. We just became friends, just shooting the breeze, just every Saturday from noon or one till around, you know, 3 p.m. for a couple of hours. And we became friends and we felt like acting. We set up a meet and greet table in the center of Toronto. And, um, and we had a little table with some signage and we were polite patriots, right? We weren't obnoxious. We weren't annoying. We weren't taking our frustrations out on people. We were ignoring people, ignoring us, people just walking by right in the center of the city, thousands of people milling around. Uh, we ignored people who ignored us. We said hi to people, said hi to us. Hey, what's up? What's up? You know, whatever. Um, we passed on some info to go. We had some flyers and DVDs, typically flyers, you know, just, you know, just walking by. There you go. There you go. Oh, what's this? Sure. Whatever. Put it in your pocket. Yeah, check it out later. Um, you know, and, 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 um, and we also talked to people who want to talk to us as people would come over to the table and they would start talking to us about oh, what's going on here. Oh yeah, you know, I've got some thoughts about this or thoughts about that. And, uh, we'd hook them up with some flyers, hook them up with some DVDs, which we burned. Um, we often did a lot of stuff for free out of pocket. We also took some donations, you know, from people out there. No, I like what you're doing. It's good that people are doing something about this stuff. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, um, so we did that, right. And instead of meeting for lunch every Saturday, we switched to doing that every Saturday from around 1 PM till around three or 4 PM. Right. Uh, and then after three or, you know, three plus hours or whatever of hanging out there as polite patriots, still 15, 20 of us getting along with each other, chatting with each other, being cool. Right. And then, you know, handing stuff out or having conversations, getting behind the table, chatting, being at the table or getting in front of the table, mixing with people. Other people would see us. They would see we were comfortable with ourselves. They would see that they could be comfortable with us. And if they walked by a couple of times or, or saw us, you know, or saw other people interacting with us comfortably, they felt comfortable interacting with us comfortably. So they would come over, take a flyer or talk to us or take a DVD or donate some money to help us, you know, uh, print more flyers and burn more DVDs and so on. Right. And it evolved from a little meet and greet table, a small little table to a larger table with a giant umbrella. Right. And that's what we did at TorontoTruthSeekers.com. Right. So I recommend you know, people can do this in any town or any city um, around the world where we're still allowed to go outside, right? Um, COVID-19 restrictions may make it tougher, uh, but if you're still locked in solitary, which I think nobody is at this point, um, you know, you're out loud out an hour a day, you can still get stuff done, right? Or you can wear a mask, you can use hand sanitizer, you can be, uh, you know, you can social distance by stretching your arm out about three feet and having somebody else stretch their arm out about three feet and go, just take that, have a good day, spray some hand sanitizer on your hands and go, psh, psh, hey, here you go, whatever, right? You can, you can work around these things or wear a mask if you have to and say, yeah, we just want people to be informed about this, you know, and so on and think for yourselves, right? If it's stupid, laugh at or correct it, smart, enjoy and pass it on and so on, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's something I strongly recommend for people out there to beat internet impotence is to say, you know what? 
um, as I found out many times in, in terms of uh, acting, right? Online, right? Um, we in Red Pillville can say they're all sheep. And they in Blue Pillville can say we're all crazy. But um, if, you, if, you're, if you're offline and you're connecting with your neighbors, you realize that no, they're not all sheep. You know, they're people with, you know, families and jobs and responsibilities and mortgages and they may manage or employ a bunch of people and they're they're responsible adults right and they'll see you're not crazy because you're proud polite patriotic canadians or wherever you're from and you're cool and you're comfortable in your own skin and people will be comfortable with you and you're not obnoxious you're not messed up by what you learned you're not taking your frustrations out on people you're cool so you know and you're, you're you're not too crazy to make a friend when you're hanging out with a few people i recommend at least five ten people you know to do something like this it's a very small town obviously it's scalable right if you got at least two people it, you're, you're not too crazy to make a friend they see you getting along with each other see you acting normalish and go eh whatever but you know five ten people you know is a good baseline where they see that little group of people getting along and they go meh you know it's fine and the only people that look crazy are people that are triggered, right? If somebody's triggered and they, you people are crazy, you're killing grandma, you're, you're full of, you're spreading lies, you're ooga booga booga, right? So if, even if they act crazy, a, a couple of random people here and there, a couple of randos, you don't act crazy with your Patriot group. And um, everybody around isn't triggered and acting crazy. So the only people that look crazy are the people that get triggered and act crazy, right? So that's how polite patriotism is a way to flex to beat internet impotence and to transcend the international net, locally connect with your neighbors, inform and empower everybody where you live, and, um, and that can be a key part of your actions, right? Um, another thing we did was, um, you know, especially us guys, you know, big strong guys ready to load up our backpacks full of weapons to fight United Nations or communist Chinese troops, you know, if it comes to that, you know, ask any man where they live, hey, if we were ever attacked, would you load up your backpack with weapons to fight back? You're damn right I would. Well, fair enough. Then you can load up your backpack with posters and flyers and you can start, you know, postering all the streets and flyering every mailboxes and getting into apartment buildings where you can and you, okay, you take odds, I take evens. You know, it's 30 floors, we'll see at the bottom, right? You know, just hit up every, you know, apartment in the building, you know, just do all the halls and get to the bottom, scram, you know, parking lots, you know, windshield wipers, you know, business mailboxes, residential mailboxes, and blah, 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 blah. If you, if you load up your backpack with guns and weapons and, 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 and supplies to take on UN or Commie China troops in some sort of Red Dawn movie scenario, then you could certainly do that before then. If you can't do that before then, I'm not so sure you'll do that then, right? With all due respect, right? I'm just saying, practically speaking, the whole, eh, when it hits the fan, eh, we'll get use our guns and fight back and we'll organize. Come on, if you can't organize before, that's going to be tough, right? So that's why a lot of these fantasies are out there one way or another as, again, part of internet impotence, right? Where, you know, when when it comes down to it, men will, will do it. But until then, eh, ain't going to do shit, right? So that's why it's important to beat that and transcend that. So that's something I recommend. And girls can help too. I'm nothing against girls, right? I love girls. Girls are great. But it really has to be men taking a leadership role because men being taught to be more like women and then women taught to be more like men just makes us crappy cartoon versions of each other, right? If there were real men and women around, then the other people, the LGBTQ, whatever, would at least have some people that can that, that are good at it to sort of emulate and then they could be polite and fit in with everybody, right? Most people straight are great at it. We don't mess with kids and we don't sexualize kids or confuse kids. But if most straight people are great at it, then others LGBTQ can be too. Because then they can be like, well, I work at a bank with a bunch of straight people, but I'm a nice, friendly, polite gay guy, so I just sort of fit in. I've got nicer clothes and yeah, I care, you know, I get, I get a, man, a manly petty. Instead of a manny petty, I get my manly petty. And I get my nails and, and, and toenails done. But um, eh, I'm, I'm just a straight up, nice, friendly gay dude. And I've met him. I met guys cool. They're cool with me being a super straight dude. And I'm cool with them being a gay dude, right? And, you know, and I don't act super straight and tough around him. He doesn't act super gay around me. We act kind of polite, comfortable in our own skin, comfortable with each other, not attacking different groups, not not up on a high horse, right? You know, women, lesbians, or even trans, right? And some grown up man or woman wants to switch. Fine, do a good job, fit in, don't cause problems, 
don't bully people, don't mess with kids, and who cares? And if other people do that, we can all collectively check them to say, no, we don't want to be all messed up by this or mess with anybody else, right? Um, and so, um, and so, um, you know, it, it's important. That's why the respect thing is, is, is so uh, is so uh, important and key, right? Um, and so when it comes to, 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 to guys and girls, you know, uh, men uh, encouraged to be more like women are just obnoxious, cartoony versions. Oh, I'm a woman. Look at me. I'm making a big mess. I'm making a big mess. Huh? Put up with me. And girls taught to be more like guys are just a big mess. Hey, I'm in your face. I'm tough like a guy. What's up? What's up? I'm in your face. I'm tough like a guy. What's up? What's up? Right? That's not how men and women good at it act. Right? Um, you know, uh, if a man wants to be good at being a woman, then she's demure. She's uh, uh, reserved. She is polite and busy and yet also gracefully distracting. She's not some mess that forces you to put up with her that wants a lot of attention. She wants to share a little bit of her tremendous feminine grace and power and vulnerability and trust with some nice men who deserve it. When it comes to politely saying hello or you hold the door, she flashes you a nice smile or you happen to be crossing the street and you sort of casually keep an eye on her and she casually, you know, smiles and is vulnerable and relaxed with you nearby. And so it inflates your male ego because you're cool. You're, you're making sure she's comfortable and taken care of near you. It inflates her ego. Men want to feel useful. Women want to feel special. Women would rather be with an animal they can tame than a tame animal. So you're polite, you know, patriotic, you know, busy men doing important things. They are graceful feminine girls that are not bothering you or annoying you. You're not bothering them, annoying them. They are just gracefully distracting you. They're not wasting your time. They just occasionally make it stand still in some appropriate way for, uh, you know, our respective ages and looks and relationships. So if a man really wants to be good at being a girl, then he'd be something closer to that, right? And if a girl who wants to be good at being a guy, she wouldn't be all in your face, tough, obnoxious. She'd be like, what's, what's a man? What's a cool man? A cool man is a cool man. A big friendly dog, right? Might bite your head off, but no need for that, right? It's cool. You know, a bunch of soldiers walk into a bar, a bunch of cops walk into a bar, a bunch of guys walk into a bar. They're not all up in people's faces. Not all, it's cool. Big, strong, say, say a, a giant rugby team or football team or basketball team of just monstrous athletes walks into a bar, right? Is everyone like, ah, you know, they're obnoxious, they're in people's faces, they're bumping into people? Hopefully not. Hopefully they're cool guys, reserved, friendly, right? Big enough to kill you, but not gonna. Big enough to chill you, so if it comes up, or big enough to kill somebody else for you. So nice to have them around, right? So they're cool, right? Until they have to snap, right? So they're not this cartoony caricature version, right? So, um, so that's a real key to in terms of beating internet impotence and saying, you know what, connecting in 3D uh, where we live locally, um, you know, it's important to, to be able to show and get respect and teach kids to, right? So that's that's another part of this. And as polite patriots flexing offline where you live, you can be role models for other people there where they go, all right, those people seem cool. They can clearly handle fun or serious stuff. Maybe that's part of the reason they're cool. They're not all messed up by everything fashionably, so everything normal's a mess. Just existing, they're a mess. And then red pill stuff just completely you know, messes with them, and they just don't want to hear it. They can't handle it. No, no, I'm cool. Totally handle fun stuff. Totally handle serious stuff. Whatever's going on, we got this. And especially men need to be able to do that. Um, you know, and, and then women with strong men are stronger women, and then kids with strong male and female role models are, are good at being kids and they want to be happy and safe and special and so on, right? So, um, so you know, that's all part and parcel of beating internet impotence, right? Um, now, as a, um, you know, a final note, um, you know, I'll talk about, you know, what's happened since 1999, right? Um, in 1999, um, a couple of movies came out, right? And, um, you know, um, the elites, the, uh, the, the super rich evil people, right, supposedly, um, excuse me, I'll try and dab a bit to take a bit of this, uh, this, this, um, warm day mess off my face. My apologies. Um, but the elites, the super rich evil people, sometimes known as the new world order or the Illuminati or whatever, right? Um, some of their, um, you know, some of their, uh, uh, credo, some of their belief systems, you know, involve, uh, Satanism right? Satanism. This is what we've heard. Now, you can look into it. You can agree, disagree, you know, whatever, 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 right? But that's, that's what people have heard, right? And so, um, 
so um you know one of the things they have to do is like a batman villain right like a villain in the old batman tv shows or batman you know uh, movies sometimes or comic books they 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 have to tell you what they're going to do uh as part of you know either being psychopaths just that just like it or like serial killers will sometimes send the cops notes you know they'll cut out different letters from a newspaper and put together messages you will never find me you know i have the victim you know, they, it's sort of like they want to get caught in a way right maybe to take them out of their own tortured existence of just being a mess um you know who messes with people um which is what a tortured existence is right um and what we're all in being encouraged to do right now so that's that's a huge problem right um so that's in the general sort of criminal mindset where there are criminals like that that want to get caught right so that's a psychopathic mindset in some but at the elite level um what they supposedly need to do is to get good good bad karma however you want to define that from the devil they have to tell us what to do or what they're going to do and give us a chance to stop them and fight back and resist and then if we don't then we deserved it right it's like um you know uh uh, uh the vampire right the story of the vampire is the vampire can't come in your house they just have to dress really nicely and have slick hair and be kind of a charming you know dangerous looking dude you know and you say uh, oh excuse me may i come in for a glass of water oh, oh, oh. And you say oh of course and then you invite them into your home and then they can bite your neck right and with the new world order the illuminati the satanic pedophile elites whatever they have to tell us what they'll do. So they'll put out plans, you know, put out in minority report. They'll put out body scanners at the airports. And if people just go, well, that's kind of neat. That's an interesting future to have your whole naked body scanned as you walk through certain areas. Then a few years later, it's at the airport, right? It's also, um, part of their predictive programming goals, right? Where they, they put stuff in fiction to get us used to seeing it later. So when it comes to all the apocalyptic movies out there, all the bad weather movies out there, all the um, dystopian future movies out there, all the, you know, in a post-apocalyptic Mad Max world, or the Hunger Games world, or the Purge world, which we're seeing sort of now with the um, Seattle, Chaz, or Chop autonomous zone, right? With the, uh, the, the, the Black Lives Matter, Antifa riots, right? You know where it's just sort of like uh, every man for themselves and do whatever you want and take your frustrations out because the world sucks we all used to be racist sexist and phobic and everyone sucked then and because of that everything sucks now and because of that and the weather that might be bad because we had nice stuff everything will suck in the future right you know just whatever you know it's it's just a total you know uh dystopian you know uh culture right they put that all out there to get us used to it and to get us to accept it because once we see it um, you know, in fiction, when our guard is down, unlike the news, where the news, you're a bit more up. The news says this, the government wants to tax you more and give it away to foreign countries and give it away to the United Nations and NGOs so they can stay at wonderful hotels and enjoy incredibly nice meals and go to incredibly expensive conferences to all stroke their chins and go, my God, the world's a mess and we are such important people uh, uh, who, are, who are thinking about it and trying to figure out something to do, do about it. That's great. Is the meeting over? Fantastic. Let's go to the hotel bar, have a couple of drinks, get ready for our fancy schmancy dinners, right? It's like you know, when the news says that to you, you know, um, you're a little bit more suspicious. But when it's in fiction, um, it's your, your guard is down. You're like, well, this is just a story, right? This is just a story of what's going on, right? A story of a dystopian future where people are isolated and divided and conquered and living online and all messed up and, and, and can't get along and seeing their culture crumble around them. That's just a TV show or a movie or a Netflix serial. And they're pumping this too. Used to watch TV shows, you know, once a week. It took a week to make a TV show. Now with binge watching, you can zone into a Netflix series. You can binge watch. You can be like, I want to watch 25 episodes of Murder on TV where, you know, they 
they, they, there's a serial killer and they kill some typically some white girl and they they, 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 they they rape her and they chop her up and you get some of that in flashbacks and scenes and some nudity and then you got her body on the autopsy table and there's more uh, sort of uh, dehumanizing nudity and, and, and death there's a dead body there and then they cut open the body they say well this is where he bit her neck and this is where he did this and this is where he stabbed her with a screwdriver and this is where he penetrated her with you know, the, so more dehumanizing and people will say well at the end they catch the bad guy it's like yeah but the rest of it is screwing you up too right and you can watch you know show after show of dexter the serial killer or, or whatever right um so the the brainwashing is accelerating at a tremendous rate in terms of you know how if if, if our culture if our uh television programming um you know is meant to program us uh as part of this predictive programming it's accelerated like crazy in the last few years, especially since the advent of Netflix and other streaming services and binge watching and so on. So if you wonder why people are all messed up, it's because it used to take a week to mess them up. It used to take a week to make a new episode of a TV show that, that, would, that would program you, right? A new episode of, you know, ER or, or you know, whatever, you know, or Cheers or, um, and if I'm dating myself, I think I'm worth it. So fair enough. Um, you know, but it used to take a week of uh, to, to make a TV show. But now it's like binge watch or Game of Thrones or something where it's like, well, you know, in this crazy future, you've got some rich evil people fighting with each other and there's a bunch of people at the bottom and the rich evil people, you know, they get away with murder and they get away with rape and, and all this sort of thing and people at the bottom are kind of slaves and, you know, craziness, right? You can just absorb all that till you get used to it, right? So, um, so I bring all that up um, to, to, to sort of, you know, uh, establish that um, they are, the elites are in some ways trying to tell us what they're up to, right? So um, now let's get back to the, the, the satanic uh, karma principle, right? Where they say, oh, uh, Lord Satan, um, we will tell the sheep what we plan to do. We hope we get away with it. We'll tell them, you know, what we're doing and how to stop it. And, uh, and then uh, if they stop it, well, fair enough, right? Because, you know, they, they fought back. If they don't stop it, then they're crap. They didn't deserve to fight back. They didn't deserve to win. They deserve what we're doing to them, right? Um, it, you know, and, and they're evil that way, but that's what they do. It's like that sheep deserves to be mutton, deserves to be steak, right? Because we opened the, 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 the door of the, of the farm and we gave them a chance to run out, but they didn't run out. They just sat there grazing. So we killed them and we ate them, right? Or we broke their legs, you know, and then they didn't run away. So we killed them and ate them, right? That cow deserved that. Right? And that's, that's what they're doing to us, where they screw us up, and then they say, wow, look at that garbage. They're all screwed up by the culture. They're all screwed up by the, you know, the white people are all cuffed up by their cuffed up culture. The black people are all cuffed up by their cuffed up culture and the, you know, uh, fatherlessness and the, uh, the, 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 the drug wrap to prison pipeline, right? And, and, and all the other dehumanized, and the Asian people and the brown people and the Hispanic people and the, and the gang culture and the this and that and the education system and the drugs and the, 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 the you know, fluoride in the water and the, the crappy food and man, and, and, and look at them. They're just, they're the slobs. They're, they're, they're all wearing pajamas, athleisure. They don't dress nice anymore. They just, they're just a bunch of garbage, right? Um, and so they do that to us. Um, and then they say we deserve it, right? So we have to transcend that. We have to transcend them screwing us up and, and them, you know, uh, saying they feel we should die and even getting us to say we, we feel we should die. I talked to a young guy, sort of early mid twenties recently. He said, my generation feels suicidal. I thought, what suicidal? When I was your age, I was bouncing off the walls, feeling happy as a pig and shit. I was having a great time with, you know, a uh, great place to live, great family and friends, great opportunities, you know, in, in university after university, right? It was nothing, nothing. I was having a blast, you know, random crap here and there, but it was nothing. I was, you know, getting along with the guys. I was getting along with the girls. I was chasing some girls or doing some cool stuff, getting the girls to chase me. It was none of this crap. It was not, not even close to feeling suicidal when I was that age, right? So felt really awful for you know, him, he's, he's transcending a bit, it a bit, certainly, but his generation. And uh, I definitely want to have a, a good conversation about it. And I did, but I want to, I want to document it in something like this or a vlog or a podcast or something to really get his thoughts about his peer group. Because and as a grown ass man, you know, I don't, I don't do that. Right. Um, like Gavin McInnes, the world got uncool. 
Um, but I'm still cool. And we figured all this stuff out. We're not all racist, sexist, or phobic. The few people that are idiots, we chill them out or we kick them out when it comes to socializing, and that's it. It's not something we've got to freak out about, right? Because we're cool. And if that guy's not cool, that person's an idiot. They're just an idiot, right? Hopefully, they, we'll try and make them not an idiot. But we're not going to let the fact that we have a random idiot that that that's, that thinks stupid stuff or you know is, is in their feelings about somebody else for no goddamn good reason make the rest of us have to be like that's total garbage right so the world got uncool but he's still cool and he's trying to keep the world cool the world got uncool i'm still cool i'm trying to make sure the world can still be cool and so i feel for these young people when it comes to that right um so so um as part of this right in 1999 as i said when i got into the segue right um two movies came out two movies came out and these movies um, can kind of define, uh, you know, what's happened since, right? The 20 years since, right? Um, and basically, um, to win, to win. What does winning mean? Winning means win. We beat the bad guys. You know, we, 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 we get the word out. We organize. We connect with our neighbors. Beyond the stuff I mentioned before, we have coalitions of things. The coalitions of patriots go to a protest. And then representatives of that protest say, hey, a thousand people who live here in this town or city uh, or state or province or country or whatever, a thousand people or a few thousand people want you to hear something, other people who live here. Are you open to listening to that? We want to connect with the restaurant association, different churches, different ethnic associations, different, the lawyers association, the doctor. So we want to connect with you formally as a group representing a significant number of people here. And if this many people wanted you to hear something, would you consider listening? Would you have an open mind to that? Because otherwise, if you want people to listen to you and you live here and they won't listen to you as an individual or even a group of you, then what kind of, you know, crap are they as people, right? You want to be listened to. I'm not just an individual trying to force you to listen to me. I or my group represents this large group. So please give what we have, uh, you know, to, to, to say a chance. Give our thoughts a chance, give our sources a chance, and, uh, and, and, and know that we are reaching out to you to give us all a chance where we live to have better people, better places to live, and a better future for all of us, right? So that's another way of approaching this, right? Um, but, um, but in 1999, um, you know, a couple of movies came out that sort of define, you know, what's happening and how to beat it. It's really simple, right? And 1999 is 666 upside down. So there may have been some, um, you know, some sort of satanic coincidence to sort of the ultimate kind of solution to what's going on right now, right? And that is um, uh, the two movies that came out in 1999 are Fight Club versus The Matrix. Fight Club versus The Matrix. Fight Club starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton, directed by David Fincher. Uh, versus The Matrix, starring Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, and uh, directed by uh, the Wachowski brothers, now the Wachowski sisters, since I think they both went transgender, right? Um, but brilliant movies, you know, uh, iconic movies. Um, Fight Club was uh, uh, crapped on to some degree uh, at its time. It was seen as violent and dangerous, and what are these guys up to, and, you know, subversive, and, you know, whatever. But when it came out on DVD, um, you know, it was celebrated as a cult classic, a real hit, a real motivational, um, you know, story for men, right? Um, and it's not that everything in the movie is right. You don't have to hit each other in the face necessarily. You don't have to blow things up. But the principles around the movie um, are sound when it comes to what's happening to men and, uh, and what they can do, right? Um, and then you have The Matrix, um, which uh, by contrast was a huge hit and it spawned the term The Red Pill right the red pill right that's where the matrix is from where it's like if you take the red pill you know you'll see the truth it's pretty crappy it's a pretty crappy world if you take the blue pill then you will go back to the matrix where eh, it's a less crappy world right there's still some problems but it's more normal get along with a bunch of people you're not always fighting something from the outside of it you're inside of it so you're part of this collective in the matrix right um and that's where the term came from right and so, um, um, you know, let's get into the Matrix first, right? The Matrix was setting us up for the international web, right? The, the internets, the international net, right? 
the Matrix was setting us up for living online, right? In the movie The Matrix, right? You know, um, you know, which is great. I loved it, but I also can see how it was used to to trap us, in, you know, in, in some ways, right? You might think red pill, red pill, red pill to do what? Red pill to be, you know, just a, a mess on the outside of things while the rest of the matrix goes on and, and, and screws everybody up and screws you up too. Because what are you going to do, right? Um, but in the matrix, um, humans were uh, trapped online, living in pods in the late 20th century or retro culture fondly recalling the past and being trapped there because the late 20th century was the absolute height of human evolution and human society that was the best it ever got and they had no future that they were in control of or could look forward to so that is the matrix and what has happened since 1999 basically that right? Trapped online, living in pods, talking to cameras, listening to people talk to cameras, right? Um, or watching other videos, right? Watching the world vicariously, losing more and more ability to control it where you live, right? Connecting better online than offline. Um, and, uh, and retro culture, right? And being trapped in retro culture. The internet, Netflix, same thing, right? Where it's like, yeah, man, 90s era, golden era hip hop was awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, oh, you know, I'm, how old are you? Oh, you're, you're 48? You're 58? How did you think when you were eight? You thought you were, you, you liked comic books. Oh, great. Well, we'll, 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 we'll resell you comic books. We'll make you think like you're eight, even though you're 38, 48, or 58, right? Um, and, and we got the X-Men and we got the this and we got the, 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 the Superman and the Batman and the, the G.I. Joe and the Transformers and so on. Wasn't all that stuff cool, right? That's the late 20th century, the 80s to say the year 2000, right? Um, and, uh, and, and old TV shows. Oh, Seinfeld. Oh, I can't wait to watch Seinfeld again. Friends. Oh, Friends was great. Oh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Right. I've dated, you know, girls relatively recently, and not that often, but it happens here and there. And um, and you know, a lot of times that's what they want to watch. Right. They want to watch stuff that made them happy when they were younger because they're not happy now. Basically, because you know, men are a mess, and you know, men, you know, uh, you know, respecting each other, and none for them to be nice to. So they can't get credit for being a girl, and uh, and they're just sort of, you know, a mess competing with each other for attention, right? And and and, and so on. Um, and and of course, they're destabilized with men, you know, being destabilized. Not like, well, women are in charge. Women this, women that. No, 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 no. Women are not empowered with disempowered men. Women are not empowered by being put in charge. They're just, they're just worried about it, right? Now, it doesn't mean they can be, they, they can have no say in things. They can't be, you know, but, but they have to make sure that there's men there to go, everything's fine, where we are, where, where, you know, where, where I'm fine. I make sure everyone where I am is fine. I make sure where I live is fine. So wherever you are with men like that, you're fine. The girl's like, really? Oh, great. Okay, well, you know, I wouldn't mind uh, Thai food instead of Indian food. Oh, you're such a sweetie. Let's go for Thai food. You know, who cares, right? But they need men to make sure that, that they're philosophically um, making sure that they got to be cool and make sure other people are cool and they're useful helping women feel special then women can be empowered to comfortably express themselves in confident straight up or graceful feminine ways otherwise they're always you know kind of destabilized by the fact that they're calling all the shots and if you call the shot and shit hits the fan what happens right so whereas if guys are calling the shots and shit hits the fan, they're more capable of dealing with it as a man. Or if guys are in the general uh, sense of being responsible for making sure things go cool, then they can even let girls call the shots. But they're responsible for making sure that the shot goes well, and if shit hits the fan, you stand up and be a man, right? So, um, so, but that's that's what they they liked, you know. They they like, yeah, let's watch an old French Fresh Prince episode or whatever, blah blah blah. You know, they, that's what they, that's what they watch on the internet, right? They're not as into the red pill stuff. Some are, but just generally speaking, um, and guys, you know, obviously some are, but it's more of a male thing to do to be digging in the dirt, getting your hands dirty, dealing with more serious stuff, dealing with more dangerous stuff. Definitely more of a, a man thing to do, right? Um, but but so that's the matrix. That's the matrix, right? We've been trapped in the matrix over the last uh, 20 years, 
right? And the movie came out and it was a revolutionary movie where they were like, wow, yeah, this is it. The bad guys, the bad guys, they're in trouble now. We're red pilled. I think the bad guys gave it to us uh, to help create internet impotence, right? I'm not saying we can't beat it. I'm not saying we can't use the internet to beat them. But I'm saying when they create internet impotence, then um, then they go, here, we gave you everything you need. We gave you this, we gave you the Matrix, we gave you the Red Pill. It was a huge hit movie. Everybody saw it, right? It's not like it's a big surprise. You know, it's, it's not like even, even normies know what Red Pill means versus Blue Pill. But what are you gonna do, right? Are you just gonna get trapped, you know, on the internet, you know, in Red Pillville, outside of the mainstream, kind of, you know, uh, working with each other to figure out how you can beat, you know, the, how you can help free people from the matrix, or are you actually going to do it, right? Because if you're just trapped outside, just like in the movie, in the movie The Matrix, if you're just trapped outside, um, and the matrix is so big and so strong, and the agents are everywhere, and it seems so hard to deal with, and you're just impotent because all this bad stuff is happening, and you're not reacting to it enough, then the matrix wins. Right, regardless of, of, if, of if you take the red pill and you're trying to help people, you know, who are who are still on the blue pill take the red pill, just like in the movie, if it's just too big and too much for you to handle, you know, without some sort of Neo Keanu Reeves character, you know, with superpowers or super control, the Matrix kind of breaking through, then you're probably screwed, right? So, um, so that's you know partly the movie, The Matrix. So, was that put out as a warning by the Wachowski brothers to us? Or was it put out as part of their plan to say, here you go, red pill versus blue pill, what you gonna do? And hey, if you don't do what you can do, then screw you, we get to trap you, right? So um, that's The Matrix, at least in, in broad terms. Oh, it's a great movie, and there's still some great ideas in there that we can use, but I'm saying it's not all, you know, just learning is not enough, right? Um, as comedian Owen Benjamin, said, I, I posted a clip of this recently on my channels. Um, he, he's got a, a great, um, 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 you know, vlog, um, vlog. Yeah, I guess, whatever, webcast, right? You know, almost two hour webcast where he goes off. Uh, the uh, ex-Hollywood comedian, uh, Owen Benjamin, and now of the Big Bear community, the Bear community of a bunch of other sort of uh, patriots and, and traditionalists and so on, right? Um, and he said, his, his uh, um, episode number 869, of, of his um, his uh, daily kind of stream is why why evil always wins right and his basic thesis is evil wins because they act evil always wins because they act they have plans they don't just learn stuff they don't just like well there's people here there's people there people like this people like ice cream people like Netflix people like this boys like girls girls like boys. You know, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, people like sports. They don't just learn stuff; they act. Evil always wins because they act, and so good can win if they act. But evil always wins because they act. Good can win if they act, but if good doesn't act, if good just learns how evil evil is and doesn't act, then evil wins. That's part of evil's plan, right? So, um, so that's an important lesson there from, from comedian Owen Benjamin. I recommend his uh, episode number 869. I haven't seen all his stuff. I don't have time to watch all of his stuff. Um, uh, you know, I'm not an official part of his bear community, but I do respect him as a man. And like every other man, um, you know, person really, maybe about 70, 80% right. And um, when he's wrong, he learns from it and he evolves his opinions and, and so on and matures and we all can. So, you know, strongly recommend, you know, um, Owen Benjamin's talk on that, right? So now, <clears throat> um, let's get to Fight Club. Because as I said, since 1999, Fight Club versus The Matrix has been what they're going to do and what we can do, right? And and in terms of Fight Club, when I say Fight Club, you know, a lot of people think, oh yeah, we got to punch each other in the face. Not exactly, right? Even in the movie, they didn't just punch each other in the face. Right, the movie they did they did a lot more than that. It was much more philosophical. The sort of um, stereotype about it is um, guys who are frustrated get together and beat each other up. Right, that's already happening. It's called jujitsu, right? Or 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 uh, UFC, you know, or martial arts or whatever. Guys already do that. You know, guys get frustrated, kind of cucked up at work or cucked up by the culture. 
and they get together and they wrestle with other guys, right? In in some ways that, you know, uh, are kind of gay, but you know, kind of not gay, but whatever. But they're like part of a, a bigger promotion of jujitsu as that specific wrestling, hugging style of fighting, as opposed to the old Jack L. Sullivan fisticuffs, right? And I know jujitsu is a very good style of fighting. I know if you're fighting one-on-one -on -one with people, it's probably the best way to fight them because you can trap them in all sorts of holds and locks. But if you're in a big old brawl, you got to find some other ways to, 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 to fight because if you just get trapped on the ground hugging some guy, some other guy will kick you in the back of the head and kill you, right? So, uh, but my point is in terms of just the sort of uh, normal understanding of the movie Fight Club, it's already happening. There's tons of guys out there that are taking UFC style classes, mixed martial arts, MMA, right? Um, which includes jujitsu and also, you know, boxing and kicking and so on. So that's already happening, right? There is, that's not the point of the movie Fight Club, right? Um, in terms of Fight Club versus The Matrix, here's what the movie Fight Club was about, right? You had a guy, Tyler Durden, played by Ed Norton or the unnamed narrator, narrator you know, um, with, his, with his sort of alter ego in, in Brad Pitt's character. But you had Edward Norton's character, you know, white collar guy, worked for uh, uh, an insurance company or a car company, was an actuarial, actuarial scientist, basically said, you know, if, if, if we, I calculate how much it would cost to do a recall, if there's some problem with the car, and if it costs more to do the recall than it does to pay out the victims of, say, seat belts that don't work or engines that blow up, you know, if it costs more to do the recall, then we don't do one right? So that was <clears throat> what he said to a woman on an airplane, right? And she goes, oh my God, that's horrible. Which car company do you work for? He says, a major one. And he wouldn't tell her his specific car company, but he told her his job, right? So that represents a guy trapped in a horrible corporate job, right? Knowing that it pays well, it has some prestige and respect associated with it. It's stable, but it's absolutely horrible, right? It's not producing a net positive for society. It's producing, say, a net negative, right? And you can have other people working in pharmaceutical sales or working as a top uh, marketing manager for Coca-Cola, saying, how do we get Coca-Cola, you know, posters all over India and Africa and everywhere. So everywhere you go, you see Coca-Cola everywhere, Coca-Cola, and you sell them all Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola is not very good for you. It's got things in it that cause cancer and, and so on, right? And sugar, and, and diabetes and health problems and blah, blah, blah. But hey, it's a good job, right? So he represented a guy trapped in corporate culture who had a job that was messing with people, right? And there's lots of us out there. We're all trapped in the system in a way. We all work for the system. We are all contributing to, um, to uh, messing us up by passively or actively being part of the system, right? You know, even if you work at a Starbucks, for example, you're selling, you know, uh, 50 cents worth of coffee for three bucks, right? Are you part of screwing people, you know, in, in that way? And you get to sit there with your friends and I like Starbucks myself or whatever, even though they, they, they've done a lot of evil stuff, you know, it's fundamentally, they, they run a decent little coffee shop house party, but we're all part of this system trapped in doing something that is, um, you know, <clears throat> not meaningful possibly meaningless and possibly even destructive, right? Um, or overcharging for alcohol or facilitating this and that, whatever, whatever. We're all part of this in some way, right? Um, and so what's his solution? Well, the first solution, and again, this came out in 1999. You can see this is all playing out in the last 20 years since, right? And it's still playing out today, right? Um, that's why Fight Club versus The Matrix is, you know, among the ultimate solutions for this, right? Um, you know, what, what does he do to deal with his insomnia, to deal with his feelings, you know, about being a mess? Well, he goes to self-help groups, right? He goes to self-help groups. He goes to groups of people dealing with issues and he tries to transcend his normal corporate guy issues to, um, you know, pretending to be a victim who has cancer or testicular cancer or diabetes or heart and stroke disease or, 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 or whatever, right? So he goes to these groups. He's trying to express himself as a man by getting in his feelings, right? And there are, you know, schools of thought out there that say, oh man, you should be in your feelings, express your feelings more. 
that's really bad when it goes too far in that direction. I even heard a guy, a friend of mine, the other day say, yeah, they say men can't express their feelings. That's crazy. Man. You be able to express your feelings? And I checked him. I didn't step to him like hard, but I checked him. I said, hey, man, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but, you know, if you go too far that way, that's really bad too, where guys are just in their feelings about everything, bitching about everything, bragging about being a mess, right? It gets, and he, he totally agreed. He goes, oh, yeah, sure. You can't go too far. You got to find balance. You can't go too far in your feelings either, right? But in the movie Fight Club, he goes to these different groups of people dealing with different issues, and he starts to um, he starts to uh, you know feel um, you know like he's cathartically getting some sort of release, right? He's like, all right, I slept like a baby. I went there, I had a good cry, I slept like a baby, right? But it ultimately wasn't solving his problems, right? Because he was becoming more and more of a fashionable mess, a fashionable basket case. He was just with other people where it was cool to be a mess. Not cool to be a man, but cool to be a mess. And he was faking it. He was faking being a mess, right? And so, <clears throat> you know, what happened was, um, basically, he was going to these groups and he was pretending to be a victim of different illnesses and so on with other victims of these illnesses. And, um, and then, Somebody showed up and made him feel like shit for feeling sorry for himself and wanting to get sympathy as a man for being in his feelings and feeling like shit and even lying about how much of a mess he was. Because if he really stepped back and looked at it, he didn't have to be that much of a mess. He didn't have to be that much of a mess, right? Now, as I said, since 1999, it's been more and more stuff. Oh, how's it going? Oh, you know, hey, hey, man, how was work? Oh, you know, work was okay. You know how it is. Just you know, play with my hair, wipe my nose, look at my toes, sketchy. Uh, you know, you know, I've said to guys working on a construction site, buddy, anything bad happened to you today? No. Anybody mess with you? No. So you didn't have a bad day? No, not really. So it was a good day. Yeah, it was a good day. So what the hell was all that? Knock it off. The guy just laughs at me. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was a good day. But the style is, oh, hey, man, how was your day? Hey, Mayor, how was your day? Oh, you know, another day, just a mess. Hey, 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 hey. Did anything bad happen that you want to tell me? Or are you just fashionably being a mess? And I've snapped him out of it. Or a guy gets in an elevator. I've worked on construction sites. I've worked at strip clubs. I've worked at uh, executive conferences, talking to Fortune 500 VPs at, at, at companies. I've worked in staffing. I've worked in, I've done all sorts of stuff, right? And uh, the construction sites and strip clubs especially were to sort of figure out more of the sort of organic bunch of men dynamic, organic bunch of women dynamic to sort of figure out, you know, their unique concerns, right? So um, just, as, just as, as an aside, but another guy gets an elevator at the construction site and he's just looking like shit. He goes, ah. And I was like, what happened? He goes, ah, you don't want to know. I say to him, fuck you. I'm a man. I can at least hear it and possibly help. Don't just be a sack of shit near me. Not some chick where I go, ah, it's okay, honey. I'll smile. Maybe you'll feel better. You know, like, and maybe you'll trust me and tell me and I'll fix it later. Fucking man. What is it? Why, well, man, some guy was supposed to deliver it at 2 o'clock. They're not going to be here till 3 o'clock. That's going to set us back. We'll have to finish this tomorrow. Ah, boss is going to give me hell. Right? I say, oh, sorry, man. I, I, I wish you luck with that. He goes, ah, yeah, sure. You know? fine but it wasn't just Ugh, uh you don't want fuck you i don't want to know what how bad what, i'm not scared of anything anyone says unless it's a direct threat and even then who knows right sometimes i've, I've had to deal with them right so you, you figure something out but you know but that's bullshit right so my, me saying that is is to bring it back to the movie fight club where um you know he's going to these different groups he's you know, I'm a mess too. Oh, it's so sad what we're going through. Yes, yes, I'm so sad too. I'm so sad too, right? And then who shows up at uh, the testicular cancer meeting? Marla, Marla Singer, right? Played by Helena Bonham Carter, a lovely lass, right? Um, she shows up and she's got her own funky kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, Cindy Lauper on 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 crack. You know, as the old expression goes. But you know, kind of a funkier Cindy Lauper, but a brunette version. And if I'm dating myself again, I think I'm worth it. Um, but um, but she shows up. Marla shows up at the at the men's t testicular cancer meeting, and and she's a she's a chick, 
and there's a bunch of dudes there that supposedly had testicular cancer and you know lost one of their balls or both of their balls to testicular cancer and she shows up and the guys there don't really want to check her because she's a chick they don't want to freak out on her they're the natural double standard kicks in a bunch of rottweilers going and then cute little poodle shows up and you don't do the same rottweiler shit or bite her head off for for being nice enough to show up right so you know she shows up and as uh, edward norton's character says and then she ruined everything right and she shows up the meeting and um and they get to talking and then he says to her what are you doing here you shouldn't be here and then she goes well technically i have more right to be here than you you still have your balls and he goes what what are you talking about and she goes i've seen you at a couple of these other meetings you know where you go to these different groups and you pretend to be a victim of an illness and he goes what no don't don't ruin my cover this is the only way i can sleep the only way i can sleep is is, is by going to these meetings and and getting my feelings out and you know you know and, and so she goes you know um you know she basically goes fine you know i'll cover for you right but he feels guilty he feels guilty as a man feeling sorry for himself lying to people trying to get sympathy this chick is here instead of feeling sorry for yourself feel sorry for the girls so you both feel better um you know he feels guilty he feels like shit, right as this girl knows his secret calls him out agrees not to tell it and he's just sort of trapped in it so now he's trapped in this lie and this girl knows it and he feels like shit because this girl knows he's a fucking liar who's in his feelings who's faking it because he can't stand himself and it's the only way he can fucking sleep right so that you know allegorically um you know is very similar to guys acting like a fashionable mess today right where guys are acting like a fashionable mess don't say anything nobody say anything about it or be even more of a lying bitch you know so you know um so the girl's like all right fine go along with you being a lying bitchy man and i'll be a lying bitchy woman and whatever 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 right so the guys feel like shit the girls feel like shit right and the guys feel like shit because the girls know they feel like shit and they're you know a lying bitch and the girls feel like shit because they're stuck with a lying bitch right so in the movie fight club you know the similar thing happens right so <clears throat> then in the movie he has i don't want to ruin the movie for you so spoiler alert if you want to see fight club then you may not want to hear you know the, the rest of this or maybe you'll still like it either way hopefully you'll forget this part you know appropriately when you watch it right maybe give it uh, give it a week or so after you hear this vlog and then watch the movie if you haven't seen fight club yet um but it's an awesome movie awesome movie one of my favorites of all time right and philosophically the ultimate movie to kind of save you know where we live today right COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you know, COVID-1984 pandemic hoax attack, live with this stupid new flu for the next two, three, five, 10, 20 years, you know, and the second waves, the mutations and what's coming next and, you know, all this, sh that, the, the riots in the streets, BLM Antifa, the autonomous zones, the destruction of law and order and the destruction of culture, the Marxist year zero, destroy everything, rebuild it from scratch, everything you ever loved, everything you ever cared about, everything that ever made you happy, you know, to beat all this shit. This is, you know, among the best movies, and, and I'm explaining why, right? So, um, so Marla, um, you know, shows up. She blows his whole in my feelings scam, right? Where he's faking being a mess, faking being a victim. When really, if he looked at his life and looked at what he was capable of, grown ass man, and where would I do? Just respect what I can. I can climb mountains and wrestle grizzly bears, you know. I, 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 don't, I don't have cute little hips making cute little circles when I walk like a chick about the journey, not the destination. But man, I walk straight to Home Depot, jump over a car on the way there if I feel like it. So fuck this, right? He's, he, he, you know, he doesn't do that. He, he does the, you know, in my feelings, you know what it is? Oh, that's better. You know, got out my impotent frustration, right? Because he was impotently frustrated with his life, with what's going on, with his place in the world, with doing everything right according to the consumer culture and yet feeling like shit and so trying to get more in his feelings and express how much of a mess he was about shit that he should have under control and he should really be doing some real shit if he has to do some bullshit corporate shit whatever shit no problem don't just do that and feel like shit and be in your feelings do that and then do some real shit right because if you have to do that bullshit and you, you get to do some real shit then you will feel like the shit because that's the shit you got to do and this is the shit that you want to do, right? As opposed to, that's the shit I got to do, and then I got to be in my feelings about it too, right? That's garbage, right? So in the movie, you know, he basically has a schism 
he basically has a schism, right, where he splits into two personalities, right, um, and, uh, and 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 basically, um, you know, without you know giving too much away in the movie, right, um, he starts you know organizing, you know, guys who are feeling pissed off like this to meet privately with each other with other men they respect, right, the new normal in 1999 right in in in, 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 in the in 1999 the normal was for men not to respect each other in public men to be quiet sheepish cuffed up lying bitchy sketchy sheepish sideways not straight up with each other not saying you know what they mean not take not standing for something falling for anything right and if you look from 1999 especially in the last five ten years it's, it's accelerated but over the last 20 years that's been more and more what's been happening to men, right? So it's been harder and harder to fashionably show and get respect, right? Because if you are a man who's a badass, ballsy dude, then you're a weirdo. You know, hey, well, you're a weirdo. What are you standing so tall and proud for? What are you so happy for? What are you saying that for? What do you get the balls to, you know, think here and say, you know, that for, right? And what do you, what do you, what are you up to? What do you, what do you? No, oh, he's always been good and bad people. You know how it is. It's always been this. It's always been that. Whatever. What do you make me feel insecure for? Don't you make me feel insecure? I'm a mess. I'm mess. I work here and I'm a mess. Don't you make me feel more insecure for being a mess? You be a mess, right? That's been the culture that has been created over the last 20 years, more and more, right? So, but in the movie, um, he got together with other men who could respect each other. Right? Other men were instead of not being able to look at each other because you're a mess and they're a mess and people want attention for being, being a mess instead of respect for making sure they're not a mess and other people aren't a mess, right? There were some guys where you didn't lie. You could look each other in the eye. You could say hi. You could be walking towards each other or you could be near each other and you could say, hey, what's up? What's up? No, straight up. Not like, oh, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, I'm a mess. You're a mess too, right? Oh, I'm a mess. Uh, I, uh, you don't want to look at me and you're a mess. I don't want to look at you. It's like, no. You know, here and there, we can actually respect each other, right? And so what he did, excuse me, is he, he got together um, with these men um, that could respect each other uh, a little bit here and there in public, a little bit here and there, not too much, not go off on this and that, but a little bit here and there, right? You know, what's up, what's up? Yeah, we can be cool. Yeah, we're actually cool with each other, not fashionably not cool with each other. We're actually cool with each other, right? And he got together with those men and, uh, and they met privately. They met privately where they could respect each other more than normal, right? That's why they met privately because in public, they couldn't do that, right? In public, they couldn't stand tall, you know, head up, chest out, shoulders back. What's up? What's going on? What's happening? What do we have to do? Let's do it. What's up? So that's why they had to meet privately, right? Because they couldn't do that publicly. And if they did that publicly near other men, they'd be all a mess and they'd have to take them down. They'd have to get down to their level instead of rise up to a normal level. And I've seen this in my own experiences with guys where fashionable, sheepish, you know, cucked up guys, when they realize the way I'm moving, right? In terms of not being sheepish sideways with them, not being an annoying drain on their energy, not putting up with an annoying drain on my energy, they rise to the occasion, right? I'm at the Source Electronics Store looking for headphones at the Eaton Center Mall in Toronto. Big black guy, you know, on the phone. I ignore a couple of people here. I kind of focus on him. He's kind of sitting down on the phone and he's there. He looks up at me and I go, that's oh, all good. I'll wait. I'll respect you. No problem. You know, so I wait. I stand there. Don't look at him. Don't bother him. Don't do anything. Just politely wait for him to finish his conversation, right? So he looks up and he goes, all right. Finish his conversation on the phone, right? And then, you know, didn't bother each other. Like men, respected each other, didn't bother each other. So, gets off the phone, <clears throat> sizes me up. And me, average height, average weight, average build guy, right? So, 5'10", buck 65, around there, whatever, right? This big black guy is kind of crumpled over in the normal crumpled, lying, bitchy, sketchy, pussy man fashion, fitting in with the other source employees, electronic store employees wearing red shirts, right? He sizes me up and he goes, oh, wait a second. It's actually safe to be kind of straight up with you, right? So he rises from his chair when he's on the phone, 
to his full six foot three, six foot four, 225 pound, big black muscly guy height. And he's not afraid to look at me, not worried about it, not whatever, not sideways with me, not fashionably uncomfortable with me, just a god. And he's there, how you doing, man? How can I help you? I was like, holy shit, dude, this is awesome. Like this dude's a godlike kind of dude. This giant muscly black dude, you know, just look like a friggin' god. I was like, yeah, what's up, man? You know, respect me, I respect you. It's a lot bigger and stronger than me, but uh, that's cool. I'm looking for some headphones. Come this way. You know, we respected each other. We joked around. We introduced each other, shook hands, talked about different options when it comes to headphones. And uh, we had a good little conversation, a good little interaction. And he, he, you know, we were straight up with each other. We were cool with each other. And I shook his hand, you know, wished him a good day and, and you know, didn't end up buying headphones that day, you know, but it was, a, it was, it was there, right? So there's still some men out there that, you know, can find places to sneak around and respect each other and show and get it. And I meet a lot of them, right? And I meet a lot of them in a diverse city like Toronto, which means they are there around the world because we have everybody from the world in Toronto. Not saying diversity is a strength, it's not a weakness. It's just what you could be a super diverse, have a good house party, great. You could be whiter than snowflakes, you know, in, uh, in, in Sweden, and you could be cool with the other people, cool with each other and cool with other people, great. You could be black as the ice of spides he was, in Nigeria, you're cool, it's fine. It's not It's not a big deal. It's about being cool with what you got as opposed to, you know, um, having something like diversity is our strength, diversity is a goal, making everyone feel weak so that you're never diverse enough and they can constantly tinker with you and constantly make you feel guilty for not being diverse enough. That's bullshit, right? So that's why it's promoted so much as a, as a driving socialist social engineering philosophy because if they keep saying diversity is our strength they can always say you're not diverse enough right we could be all different colors but we're too straight we could be all different colors but we have a bunch of gay people but we're not trans enough we could be all different colors and gay and trans but we're not disabled enough we'd be all different we're not aboriginal enough but we're not this we're not they could just keep messing with us right so that's why that's pushed you know um as a as a as a as a as a, as a philosophy as a driving philosophy but, you know, honestly, it's not that, you know, you just have to beat that philosophy. But otherwise, you know, when it comes to Toronto, um, we do represent people around the world and men around the world and people around the world. And so if there's different and, and it's a big city, five million in the greater Toronto area, three million downtown. So there's large pockets of people, not just, well, we got a black guy in a small town. We got an Asian guy over there, runs a convenience store. We got an Indian doctor at the hospital. It's like, no, we have a lot of everybody here. Right. And so it's definitely true across um, cultural lines that there are men out there that want to be cool, right? And so it's it's definitely true around the world, right? Um, <clears throat> so back to Fight Club. So in the movie Fight Club, they got the guys together privately, right? Now, one of the reasons you get the guys together privately with no girls, and again, nothing against girls, and girls can be patriots, and girls can be good at being patriots, right? Um, but there is still that double standard, and there is still, you know, the girls want... Um, the party and the attention cu just culturally and socially and maybe even genetically as part of their makeup whereas the guys want the do stuff right there's very few girls that say that's it when it hits the fan I'm getting my gold and my guns and my bible and my seeds and I'm heading for the hills I'm getting off the grid that's it screw everybody I'm gonna go live in the mountains right that's not a chick thing to do guys I mean, a lot of guys at least think it and say it and be like that'd be kind of cool Right? But that's not a girl thing to do. Girls are much more social creatures, right? Um, and, um, and, 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 um, and, and girls like the double standard, right? If guys are you know, talking about serious stuff or boring stuff or whatever, and a girl's not happy, then she'll often let you know she's not happy. She'll be bored, she'll be a mess, she'll be uncomfortable near you, and you'll be like, uh oh, here we go. You know, hey, honey, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. No, no really? You okay? Well, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, I know you're not okay. Okay, let's let's do something else, watch something else, say something else, whatever something else, right? Whereas guys don't do that or aren't supposed to do that with each other, right? And so, um, but it's cool, right? Because girls put you in a good mood. They're a tremendous source of uh, uh, nutrition and inspiration and information. And, and you know, when, when guys, men, are, men are good at being men, then girls are good at being girls. And Girls want big, strong men, and men want nice, fun girls. And so men want to be big, strong men. Girls want to be nice, fun girls. So it's all it all works out, right? But that's why they met separately, is because then they don't have to default to the double standard. 
You don't have to worry about what they say, right? You know, if, you know, if 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 a girl's like, ah, oh, not comfortable with this, right? Then you don't be an asshole, right? Um, you know, as long as she's not a bitch. If she's a bitch, draining your energy, making you uncomfortable, being obnoxious, annoying, that's different, right? But if a guy's cool and and the girl's nice, then you you have that double standard to relate to, right? You don't just be, you don't just act like a bitch yourself. Go oh, stupid bitch, wouldn't put up with my stupid shit, right? You don't do that. You have the masculine, feminine, lady and gentleman, gentleman with a lady, double standard to default to, right? Um, and um, and then your your men are straight up with each other and nicer to girls, nicer to them, and that's it. That's life, right? As opposed to death, right? Um, but that's why you know the guys met separately from the girls. And that's also why the Freemasons do it, at least one reason, the Freemasons do it. Other elite circles do it. That's why it's so discouraged. Because, you know, if, if a girl, you know, doesn't want to talk about something, then you don't, you know, you don't push her on it. Unless it's, you know, absolutely serious, situational, but typically. I've had female bosses. I was doing executive conferences, talking to Fortune 500 companies. I had a lovely boss, brilliant woman, pleasure to have her time. She was smart, she was sharp, she was good, right? But she had some problem, and and I was going to have her job in a few years if I stayed there. And she's like, you know, something happened related to work. And I was like, what's the problem? She goes, ah, you don't want to know. It's just a mess, right? And I didn't push her on it, right, because she's a girl. If it was my male boss, I do the same thing with all guys. I do the same thing we do in Fight Club. Fuck you, buddy. Tell me. You know, what what, what is this shit? You're not going to fucking tell me. You know, we work in the same job or the same area, the same industry. I might have to deal with that shit. I might be able to learn from that shit. Don't just fucking bitch out and not tell me and, and, and act like I'm a bitch that can't hear it. What the fuck, right? Um, so I wouldn't, I mean, obviously it's corporate world. I wouldn't say it like that, but I would push my male boss to tell me what the problem that he was irritated by was more than I would push my female boss where I'd go, all right, if you don't want to talk about it, Smile, have some sympathy for you. Hope that fixes half your problems in terms of feeling bad. If you want to talk about the rest later, you're with a guy that smiles at girls and treats them well, so maybe you'll trust me too, or maybe it'll, you'll work it out some other way. Who cares, right? Um, but that's the difference, right? So in a group of men, right, where, you know, as long as they're not getting sheepish sideways on each other and uncomfortable with each other, fashionable, you know, messed up girl, you know, with each other, instead of men agreeing to act like and put up with messed up girls, men make sure no one does, right? It, it, as long as none of them are there, as long as the men that you can actually show and get respect, don't lie, look each other in the eye, be cool with each other, even if it's just here and there, as long as those guys are getting together privately, just like in the movie Fight Club, then you can have that meeting where you can actually respect each other, be straight up, talk to each other, argue with each other, yell at each other, think, talk, and fight, and figure out how to do stuff for where you live, right? Um, and when it comes to the physical fisticuffs, it's an option, but it's not necessary. Fight club is really like talk club, right? Just the other night, I was yelling with a dude it on the phone. I was talking with one dude, hang with one dude, you know, whatever, grown ass dude. We filmed some stuff, a little, you know, discussion we had. Another dude who we both know was on the phone. He was yelling at me about women, about women this, women that, and just want looks, money, this and that. You're crazy or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 it's not like that. But he's like, oh, you're utopian. You don't know any better. We're in this system. It's all messed up. I'm like, yeah, but people are people. And I interact with them and I know what's up. And he was just, we were, we were, we were really fighting with each other. We were really, really going at each other. And the third guy um, who I was hanging with while he had our, our other buddy on speaker, was just sort of taking it in, going, whoa, you guys are really going at it, right? And as part of our yelling at each other, we did mix in some, look, man, I respect you, you're not stupid, you got your own opinion, I got mine, it's like, I totally understand, and we just, and then we went back to yelling at each other, like yelling, like I'm thinking this dude is dead wrong about what he's saying, but then we found some common ground, he's right about this, right about some of the problems, wrong about the solutions, he's saying I'm wrong, you know, he's right about the problems, and he doesn't know any solutions, I said, buddy, I've got some solutions. He goes, yeah, whatever. And, but then we eventually yelled at each other and moved each other closer to each other through the process of yelling at each other in a way that would be completely unseemly and ungentlemanly um, if there was a girl there, right? If there was a girl there and me and this dude were full on yelling at each other, like really, literally, I'm, I'm making the point to make the point. We were literally yelling at each other 
if anybody saw us, they could have thought any second we'd start throwing punches. But we were just men, really passionate about being men, knowing what we're talking about, understanding the world, you know, clashing ideas. And at the end of that conversation, we came to a, a, a conclusion where we respected each other. We were fighting, but we respected each other. We were talking over each other, yelling over each other. We were fighting. But at the end, we ended that argument. This was just Saturday, June 20th, 2020, where this happened, Saturday night, after Buddy and I filmed a little interview or, or you know, a little, little discussion we had. And then we called third Buddy back because we were supposed to connect with him, whatever. And this was after the Toronto anti-lockdown rally and we had a street action, 12 to 3, 3.30, 4 was the uh, anti-lockdown rally at Queen's Park. And then 4 to around 7 p.m., you know, was uh, street action, handing out flyers to neighbors, and then 7 to like 8.30, eating, socializing, and then after that, bouncing, hanging out, whatever, right? So that was after all that, a day of that, right? Um, and at the end of it, we both felt great, and the third guy who was hearing us was like, wow, dude, that's awesome. That's exactly the type of thing we need to get out there. We need to get that out on video. We need to get that on YouTube. We need to get, we need to get other men to see that. What you guys did was just was just awesome, and this is a, this is a third guy watching two guys yell at each other to the point where it would look, if we weren't mixing in some signs that we respect each other, when completely disagreeing with and fighting with each other, it would look like we could throw punches at any second, right? It, or it would sound like it, right, to, to to some people in terms of that energy, right? But that's part of being men, right? And so that's why it's important for the guys to get together and, and respect each other, right? And 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 really go at it uh, verbally and uh, physically is an option, right? I'm not I'm not against it. I just I think it's a you know it's a waste of time and dangerous and risky in some ways, but it's also practical. And if guys want to engage in that too, but the most important thing is verbally, um, you know, uh, uh, thinking, you know, uh, saying what you mean, hearing each other, talking, fighting and coming up with the best ways to, 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 to scrap with each other about what to do about where you live, right? That's the fight club idea, right? Um, and with respect to this, you know, just um, I had to warn another buddy about this when it comes to mixing um, uh, Patriot circles, right? Um, where I was like, you know, because people know the fight club idea. Everybody understands this. Patriots and civilians understand fight club versus the matrix in some general way. Like, whoa, yeah, you're right. We are all living online. It would be nice if a bunch of guys got together and helped us get out of this mess because there's a bunch of crap going on and we're worried about it, right? Everybody understands, right? Um, you know, so it's not, you know, a total foreign thing, right? But I was talking to another buddy of mine, you know, who's, who's, who's you know, active in, in some things. And I mentioned about meeting together and I warned him. I said, look, if there are girls here, you know, you have to have a, a check on them, Right. I can't check some other guy's chick. Not when he's there, certainly, especially. Um, well, he's not there, sure. You know, they all want some man to, to be a man, you know, to, to here and there. So it's okay. I can do it with other. I can growl at other girls who are a little bit nervous and chill them out and and get them to go er and go er and they can go. Yeah. Well, I'll be a cute girl, Mr. Big Strong Man. You know, if they're nervous, if they're not just naturally relaxed and friendly, or if they're not rude and obnoxious and force me to put up with them. If they're just half and half, I can. I can find ways to fix that. Nervous, you can fix. Rude is, it's you know, it's just not, you don't feel like it. It's not worth it. They don't respect you enough for you to want to try. You know, you can't really do much with people who are rude. They can't do much with you. Like, that's that's why it's now a more normal thing to do to make it impossible for us to find uh, anything to do when it comes to the future and, and me and you, you know, that that's why, right? But nervous is, that's fine. But I told him, I warned him, I was like, look, if there are, are, are girls around, and the masculine energy gets up where we're all standing taller. We're all respecting each other. We're all, you know, you know, communicating well, right? Um, and we're more badass dudes, right? Then the girl, the girl or girls are going to want attention from the dudes acting more badass, right? So, you know, if it's, you know, if they're nice about it, maybe you can give them a little bit. If it's some guy's girl there or some guy's relationship with her, he's got to be responsible for keeping her in check or while well, she wants attention like a girl, she wants to be like, hey, you guys are all ballsy and badass. I'm cutie over here. You know, you say, hey, how's it going? Ah, yeah. you get her out of her cutieville and, and you know, what? Oh, what do you mean? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Get her out of her girl world, get attention, look at me, 
you know, kind of, you know, um, um, stees, right? And style, you know, manner, right? You got to get her out of that because otherwise she's going to compete with the guys, you know, manning up for attention like a girl. It's like um, busy guys at a construction site, hammering away, bump, 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 hammering away, trying not to break his thumb, hammering away. Pretty girl walks by the construction site, walks slow, look cool, try and feel, walks slow, looks cool, tries to feel hot. And guys like hammering away, notices casual cute girl there nearby, relaxing, vulnerable, feminine, attracting attention, you know, looks over and whistles, <whistles> right? Girl's like, ah, silly boys and cares about her, don't care. And I'm making a big production, but just a relaxed, attractive version of herself and wanders off, you know, with her little compliment. Guy's like, cool, good mood. Didn't waste my time, didn't waste hers. Just made it stand still, so I'm still on schedule. Fair enough. Hammer away. Finish this by 3.30. Go home. Go to gym. You know, like, it's fine, right? Um, you know, but 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 if there's girls around, that's, the, that's a danger of that happening is the girls are going to want attention or they're going to want, um, you know, to make their concerns competitive with the bigger concerns. You know, it's the girl or the world or it's both. You know, you got the girl, you figure out the girl, then there's the rest of the world, right? You get the girl, and that's why they, they screw up relationships, men and women so much, is girls, guys and girls, the guy-girl stuff is not that hard, right? That's why they make it really hard. Because if you get that and you just empower each other, then you can you can handle the whole world, right? But the guy-girl stuff is really not that hard. That's why they make it seem like it's so hard, and they mess with us so much when it comes to that, right? Um, so... Um, so that, that, that's why these guys got together privately with a bunch of other men. They didn't worry about it. They didn't worry about what anybody said, what anybody did. They could check each other. It's hard to be a man with no man around. Can't say calm down or stop being a clown. It's hard to be a man with no man around. Can't say calm down, stop being a clown, right? But if you can, it's fine, right? Just playing basketball the other day here in Toronto, you know, there was some dude, and this dude was, um, was kind of... Um, you know, he was, uh, he was um, you know, directing traffic a bit at the court, right, on the court. Hey, you know, go over there. No, set the pick. No, you should cut off the pick or whatever, whatever, right? And he's a little, little, you know, Italian, Italianish dude in the stereotypical way, right? Little buffish, you know, Italianish dude, right? And, um, and, uh, and he, you know, a lot of these guys are younger than I am because I'm older, but I'm still, you know, young. I, I've got to be around, you know, I've got to sort of be around 30-ish, um, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, still have some potential, um, you know, I, I, I sort of said I wasn't going to age past that because, uh, of stuff to do and stuff to get done. So sort of mentally, physically, in some ways, you know, optimized, I'm sort of around there. So, but realistically, I'm older than that. Right. Um, but the point is, you know, I'm older than some of these dudes, these young guys. And the guy was saying that, and the guy said, you know, I sorry if I was a little bit, you know, uh, uh, you know, bossy or pushy or whatever there. And I was like, hey, no problem, man. We, I, I, I told him, and there's, you know, like eight other guys there or whatever. I said, like, no problem, man. Look, we're we're all guys. You know, it happens. You know, as long as we can check each other, it's cool. It happens to all of us. All of us as men will go too far at some point. I will. I certainly have a bunch of times, too many times. There's not enough men around to check me, and I've checked a bunch. And sometimes I'm checked, rarely, because there's not enough men around, right? But I've checked a shitload, right? And they all respect that, right? And um, and so the guy said that, hey, sorry if I was being a little, I was like, no problem, man, as long as we can check each other, as long as we don't get our manties in a bunch, you know, and make the girls get their panties in a bunch, who cares? And I said, the it's hard to be a man with no man around, can't say calm down, stop being a clown. It's hard to be a man with no man around, can't say calm down, stop being a clown. I just kind of spit those lyrics at the basketball court, you know? And the guys kind of grooved to it for a second, kind of laughed. Hey, yeah, you're right. So what? If one of us goes a little far, this other of us here, so what? Right? We'll just, we'll check it and then keep it moving. You don't catch feelings about it. Right? So what? Right? So, um, so, um, so that's, um, you know, that's, that's an example, right? So back to Fight Club. So the guys got together as they were with a bunch of other guys they felt more like men. They felt more like men who were helping them be men. They weren't in their feelings. They were focused on what to do, right? They were they were they were fighting or talking or hanging out, and they were thinking, "All right, so there's a bunch of stuff going on. How do we get stuff done?" And they were doing some anarchist stuff. Let's you know destroy this monument. Let's you know uh, uh, you know 
set make a big smiley face fire smiley face in the side of a building let's do whatever and they're coming up with more and more ways to beat the biggest problem we all have which is the major financial institutions of the world run the world and control us and trap us in this rat race with these rat traps so they were going after the central banksters right now below the central banksters there's the credit card companies and they've got you know the whole world's credit and they've got your credit card and if you can't pay your credit card then they're going to charge you you know 15 18 20 percent interest on your credit card usurious exorbitant evil rates of interest for a giant financial institution doing well maybe that's partly why they are but if you're doing that friggin well you don't need to screw poor people who didn't have enough money so they had to use their credit cards to pay for stuff and they had to max them out and go into debt on them and now you're charging them 20 percent on that debt you people are scum right and so they were finding ways to basically beat the central banksters at the top printing money from nothing to use it to you know, bribe corrupt and control the world right and their respective financial institutions that's what they were working up to doing as part of their exercise in the movie fight club and you can see the movie yourself you can see it yourself right starts off with just being cool with each other starts off with fighting each other maybe physically maybe verbally starts off with you know getting into some form of combat with each other to get out of that combat both feel like better men for that combat and then realize they respect each other you know through that combat we competed with each other verbally physically intellectually happens in basketball which i like to play especially tennis i play but played a lot you know all sports not all but a whole bunch of sports and um and and you feel better once you're, you're you go you you push yourself against other guys when it's when it's you know that level of competition right intellectually i've done this debating in public speaking in university when you're really going at each other you're really having a good round a good debate you're in the main rounds you're in the quarterfinals or semifinals or finals and you really have a good scrap you feel better for the scrap even win or lose you feel happy you scrap with some other guys and there's girls in debating too and in some of these you know areas but typically with guys you feel good to go through that scrap and make it through that scrap as better stronger men for that scrap and in the movie they were scrapping they were scrapping with each other get to know each other cool after fighting or arguing with each other then they were scrapping with the world taking little incursions again not the matrix not the internet not the red pill internet impotence but in the real world right how do we have little acts of rebellion in this culture right how do we have little acts of rebellion and it, some of the stuff was stupid i'm not endorsing everything in the movie some of the stuff is stupid or gross or whatever right um you know because it's it's you know it's, it's a movie it's funny you know whatever i'm not endorsing every single thing it's just the the principles are are what Fight Club versus The Matrix in terms of saving the world. We were told in 1999, last 20 years, see it play out. The principles are what's most important. But they started making little incursions into the real world. Hey, man, can we have some success here as a collective of, of men that are influencing where we live? You know, getting people to open their minds and think and getting people to, to, to react to what we're doing and, and so on and feel good about it? Yes. And they were building up to ultimately in the movie um, blowing up destroying the major um, uh, financial institutions credit card companies their sort of central hubs in a major city um, which I don't recommend I'm not advocating for that in a literal sense like in the movie but in the metaphorical sense getting everybody hip to these bastards and blowing up their game blowing up their game plan right blowing it up so that everybody knows who's who's funding the shit show that 100 percent right beyond the usual latest what are they saying now oh they're saying uh, we we can't say african-american anymore we have to say uh, uh dispossessed you know uh indigenous african person uh of american but not really american of uh semi-american persuasion I got to use 75 syllables. Just talk about that black guy over there. You better do it or you're racist. Man, fuck this shit, right? Who's behind all that shit, right? Like, who's behind that? 
um, you know, that is ultimately what's important, right? And so in the movie Fight Club, they were seeing step by step from, you know, corporate job, meaningless to in his feelings, self-help, and then, uh, you know, feeling like crap. And then a girl goes, you know, ha ha, he's so pathetic. And the guy goes, fuck this, I don't want to be pathetic. I'm going to go get together a bunch of guys and do some real shit. This broad make me feel like shit for this stupid shit. And then, of course, he got together with the girl later and because she was like, woo, you're... You're, you're such a man now. You're not a pathetic guy going to self-help meetings. You're you're up to something that's making you a lot more manly. Can we have sex, right? Like, you know, she got into it. Before, she was a dude that he mocked for, for being in his feelings. But then later, when he was a more fully realized, badass version of himself, you know, organizing other men, she was totally turned on and just a sweetie, you know? So, you know, there you go, right? So a whole bunch of good lessons from that movie. Um. But yeah, that's basically it, right? Um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, internet impotence, sort of what it is and how to beat it, is, um, you know, um, you've got uh, you've got Fight Club versus The Matrix as certainly you know a potentially good uh, option relative to to what's going on um, and and what we see happening today. Um, so there you have it. Um, you know, I guess I guess we'll leave it there for now. I don't want to go on and on. This has been something that I hope is uh, uh, informative and empowering. So, um, so BK for manforwars.com when it comes to internet impotence and what it is and how to beat it. I hope this helps. Feel free to like, uh, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions or uh, financial support or, or interview requests or whatever. Get in touch. Get Speak freely and get in touch. Uh, leave comments below. Don't let trolls out there putting, you know, totally unrelated you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, racist or confusing or self-indulgent or bitchy comments throw off normal conversations, which is often what I think uh, trolls are paid to do to make sure that normal patriots can't see stuff like this and many other videos and, and have normal conversations about, you know, important things with each other, right? And, um, and uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, I do hope this helps. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.